Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching and in this video I'm going to show you how I get my Cadians on the battlefield as fast as possible with this speed painting Cadians guide. Step one of this speed paint is the undercoat, black spray first, then it's been sprayed with lead belcher and this is one of the key components for really cutting down the time you're spending painting these models. Now I am doing a sort of box art inspired colour scheme, it comes out a little bit grim darker than the box art because they go for very kind of super highlighted. I wanted to do something slightly like that, uh, just kind of in my own style. So we're starting off with an army painter desert yellow colour here, which is going on to the trousers and sort of jackets areas, so the cloth areas of the models. Um, putting it on, making sure we're not having any of that metallic showing through underneath, like you would with any kind of standard base colour. Going back over, you'll see here into places uh, where I just don't think it's gone vibrant enough. Now, this second layer I'm doing, I'm putting mostly on where you would typically apply a highlight. So I'm not necessarily doing a second layer every single place because the paint is actually uh, strong enough in those places, but putting it back down onto the sort of raised areas means that it acts almost like a highlight layer, especially with the washes we're gonna do later. So it would have been fine to leave a one layer, but a quick second layer um, really will help out. Now, here's an area where we're gonna save a lot of time. So when we're putting the army green and we're putting this onto the sort of metallic areas, the armor panels, and we're not being so precious about covering every last uh, part of the model. So what will happen is when we do the, the wash stages later, or even before that, you'll see bits of that metallic showing through, like on the edges of the armor, sort of in some recesses like that, and it looks like, you know, they've been in the walls. You can do what I've done here, and uh, I'm basically gonna leave a, a big section of the metal showing on that shoulder pad where maybe a, an impact from the last gun or whatever has happened and sort of damage the armor. This will give them more of a battle damaged feel, but it also makes the paint scheme that little bit quicker. Now we're moving on to a Vallejo green gray to do uh, the putties, the webbing, all the kind of other cloth that isn't, uh, you know, the trousers and the jacket. Now, all the paints I'm using are up on the top left of the screen. I'm going to put all the paints at the end as well. You can follow along exactly as these paints are showing, or just use them as inspiration, just really see the techniques that I'm doing. And I think to note on here is, when you're doing an area that isn't meant to be metallic, just be really careful that you are covering all that kind of silver area. And I am doing a single pass with this, because again, um, the clothing and the cloth doesn't need that kind of almost highlight layer that we did with the army yellow as you saw before. A little bit of flat flesh on there, uh, onto the face, just to do some pale skin there. Now I'm not going into any crazy depth with how I do my faces or my skin here. It's a fairly basic skin scheme because again, this is going to be a battle ready army and we'll sort of touch on more on that there. But again, similar like I said before, um, you know, just don't leave any of that metallic showing. Now for reference, if you watch my channel for a while, I do do all my paints off a wet palette. So these have been treated to that kind of uh, effect that a wet palette has and slightly waters them down before they go in. So check out the wet palette video if you're unsure about that, because um, that is how this paint is going on, you know, quite nicely. So we're not having to, you know, water it down or whatever. Now onto the boots, just a small area of leather on the models there, just covering the boots. You'll see where I've done the strap with that previous green gray. And then we're on some detailing on the weapons. now. And the guns, if you'll see, the casing of the rifles I've done with the army green. And again, same thing, left some little patches off so they're battered. The sort of hand grips and things on the guns, doing it with the Abaddon black here. And I'm not making this look like damaged uh, metallics because in my sort of back of my head, you know, the grips and the pistol grips and things are more plastic. So they wouldn't get, you know, damaged and uh, show the chipping. Whereas the green areas that I've painted in my head are sort of metallic. So just an interesting effect across the models. Now, Retributor Armour, a lot of my colour schemes, I will start off doing metallics first. In this instance, I don't know quite why I did it this way around, uh, but working on the Retributor Armour for some of the brass or cold gold effect areas, and there's not too much on these models that I do it on, just the Aquilas on the helmet, sort of skulls on the buckle, and the Aquilas if there are any kind of on the, the guns, and sometimes they're on the water bottles like you see here. So I am showing this uh, scheme on one model, but actually when I painted this, I painted a whole 10-man squad, because batch painting like that will speed you know, the process up. So picking up some detailing, a little bit of red onto the grenades, uh, which in this case, you know, we've got a couple on there. A lot of the models do have grenades. That's a really great thing about the new Cadian models. Lots of little details, lots of straps and pouches and sort of more interesting stuff from the old models, which is what definitely drew me onto these models. And that's something I will touch on later on. Now I'm doing a tiny bit of detailing on the face. I said I wasn't gonna do much, but doing a little bit, taking some bone white and just dropping it in this case into the teeth of the model for a little you know tiny bit of contrast and then we're going straight onto the wash so the model's been left thoroughly dry i'm not going to touch on what i did on the base but i'm just doing a real basic sand one there and then we're taking the whole model and washing it in games workshop sepia wash so this is the um 
the workshop one quite often in my videos if you've watched a lot of them over the years you'll know i use a vallejo wash which is a far far dirtier wash but that would definitely need you to do lots of highlighting or some other bits afterwards on this kind of model so i didn't want to do lots of extra work after the wash stage so this is that model at the wash stage and this would be perfectly battlefield ready in fact the vast majority of the army i don't do anything else to and i've been to a doing this video sort of after I've done sort of a little uh, mini weekend of gaming some more games to play today with this army actually uh, but I've taken it to a certain stage which this is showing um, and then you can go back and do some more detailing later on so you can see here it's worked across all the models the only thing I haven't shown is the blue that's gone into the eye lenses of a couple of the models here so that's the color scheme real quick real simple and really effective on the battlefield now the only thing i would do if you wanted to put a little bit of extra effort in here is take exactly the same colors you've already used and do a little bit of edge highlighting now on the cloth here it already looks like it's highlighted because we went back with a second layer on the raised areas but with the wash it's darkened it down a little bit so if you take the same colors you've already used on the edge a very thin brush like here and run it along the raised areas where that kind of sunlight's going to hit it will give you an edge highlight effect and looks like you spent a lot of time on the models. Now, I did this on this particular squad. Didn't do it on the rest of the army, which is already painted at the point of this video coming out. If you check my Instagram, you'll see I've put some shots on this army being used at a bit of a gaming weekend over Easter that I'm doing with a lot of mates. We're playing 40K and we're playing a bit of Hero Quest. Um, so you don't need to at this stage to make it a perfectly usable battlefield ready army, but it takes it and just lifts it that little bit further and just makes you like you put a bit more effort in so this is a super super quick speed paint hope you sort of like the techniques and things you've seen here it is very very similar to the box art but i wanted to make them a little bit more grim dark and with some differences in terms of how the pouches and packs and things look on the model so it's close and it's inspired by the the cover art but it's not you know in any way exactly the same as the kind of um heavy metal style you're going to see so that's the time i spent doing the highlighting on the clothing with that desert yellow and then i just move on to the armor and things like this and again and hope you can see on the armor there there are patches and panels where this armor looks battered and bashed and i think looks really good so the finished squad after a little bit of highlighting here you go and there's the full list of colors that i have used um in this scheme i really like it um i think it works really particularly well uh, and there's going to be a few more videos in this series uh, linked to the Cadians, you'll see here on the flamer and the melter gun it's been left with a plain brass end because i've not quite decided how i'm going to do the sort of flamer burnt effect but i've got a couple of techniques i already use i'm going to experiment with some others see which works the best and then show how i finish those off on the channel and i've got plenty more Cadian content to come so if you liked that like comment subscribe i'll see you in another video